Welcome to the show, everyone. My guest today is Kevin Thompson. So Kevin is what is known as a super connector. Now, it's not on his business card. In fact, we chatted a bit about business cards. And does anybody use business cards anymore? But that that's how I describe him, because he's one of those people that when you meet him, you feel the authenticity of the connection that you're making. And what he's done is essentially built a business around being a connector and then connecting other people, of course, right? And inside of communities and and even outside too, you know, when when Kevin has a thought of that person needs to meet that person, he acts on it right away. And we spoke about this because I think there was some important lessons here for anybody that may be thinking, man, I wish I could just leave my job and go and live in paradise and move my family to Mexico or Costa Rica or whatever. But then they stop and think, well, wait a second, but what am I going to do? Am I going to become a computer programmer? Am I going to learn digital marketing and try and sell services and become a coach, a consultant or whatever? So the thought of just being a genuine connector of humans, imagine that as a business model. Imagine what you can create the abundance that comes from actually making connections that can turn into amazing relationships and even business dealings and multi-million dollar businesses that get created from it. Every single person that I've met who has made it in their businesses has done so by connecting with the right people and then having those networks that they can always tap into, that they can always give back to, knowing that that circle of influence is ultimately where the real value is. So I think you're going to really enjoy this episode. Um, I can't wait for you to meet Kevin and just feel again his authenticity and hopefully take away a few nuggets yourself of what's possible if you just focus on your relationships in your life. So let's go ahead and give it a listen. Okay, Kevin Thompson. So good to see you again, my friend. I know we chatted like a week ago, but it's always nice to see your face. Same, same. Good to see you too again, Trevor. Yeah, I know I was looking forward to having this conversation. We had such a great one on your podcast like a week ago, and I love the format of what you're doing over there, and I definitely want to dive into that because I know podcasting's been something that's added a lot of value to both of our lives. Um, But I also want to dig into you, and I want to find out, you know, how does a guy become who you are? today (laughs) because there's not really a job title i don't even know what do you put on your business cards now with regards to what you do who you serve all that kind of stuff do you got a title you know not really and i don't have business cards either (laughs) (laughs) well there you go yeah i might be dating myself or dating ourselves with that one hey (laughs) yeah yeah, I mean, I just um, get to just, you know, it's like people people just end up having conversations and that have known me over the years for many years are like, you know what, you should just, you and you and Kevin should have a conversation and talk about this. And so it's, that's how I usually get yeah. connected with people, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. And that's obviously, I've learned this over the years too. I, you know, we joke around about business cards, but I was actually just cleaning out our storage room because we're trying to get rid of stuff and sell things because we're fa- our family's moving. And I came across a box and I swear I had a thousand business cards in that box, Kevin. Wow. wow. That was from probably 2003 to 2010 type thing when people actually used to still use business cards. Yeah. yeah. But I just think about all those people and I think, how many of them do I really know? How many of them would I be able to follow up with and they'd remember me? It right. just got me thinking, and that's why it's 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 really tied tightly to I think what we'll discuss here today, because um, I want to tap into your brain. I want to figure out what it takes to uh, to ultimately create those ripple effects of of impact around the world. So yeah, yeah. we'll get into all of that stuff. But really quickly, before we get started, I always like to start with this quote by Brene Brown because it kind of sets the foundation for the conversation that we'll have, and that is. One day you will tell your story of how you overcame what you went through and it will be somebody else's survival guide. So that's our grounding mm-hmm. and the intention of this conversation. And somebody's going to hear this message and it's going to change their life. So with that, why don't you just do a quick introduction, tell everybody who you are. I want to hear how you actually describe who you are huh, that's <laughs> and what good. you do. That's good. Um, so I'm Kevin Thompson. Uh, I am co-founder of a community called Tribe for Leaders. 
Uh, my partner, Jules Duncan Hale, and I have been running that community for uh, going on three years now. Uh, I, in my previous business, which was a training company, uh, I, I, I grew that business solely through strategic partnerships. And so as a result of that, uh, over a 12 year period, I did about almost 600 strategic partnerships. Uh, and through that process, I met a lot of amazing entrepreneurs. And without even realizing it, uh, it just kind of set me up for what I do today because I just created relationships with so many amazing entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I know we've talked about this before, but I think along your journey, you've even had some aha moments where you didn't even realize it. I forget, was it maybe Joel Polish or somebody that said to you at one point, like, hey, you should go do this thing. You, This should be your business. Or, or who was that person again? So, well, I forget. So you told me was, this story one point. Um, yeah, it was actually, so I, what, what really spurred it on was, uh, gosh, it's probably been 12 years ago now, uh, there was two friends of mine, Brian Kurtz and Perry Marshall. And Brian, at the time, was working with Marty Edelston at Boardroom Reports. And, and Boardroom is a huge direct mail company. They mail millions and millions of pieces of direct mail. But they were trying to figure out the Google AdWords platform and uh, have challenges with it. And Brian's telling me about this. And I'm like, well, gosh, you know, you should get a hold of Perry Marshall. And he's like, do you know Perry? I'm like, yeah. I was like, I know Perry. And I was like, him and his team, they could totally help you with that. And so I connected the two of them. Well, uh, Perry and his team did help the folks at Boardroom with the Google AdWords platform. But beyond that, Brian and Perry became great friends. And about a year later, they held this live event together called uh, Titans of Direct Response. And I remember opening day of that event. I was not at that event, uh, but uh, I had a lot of people who knew me who were at that event in attendance. And and I was getting all these messages from people that knew me, uh, you know, saying, hey, you know what? Uh, Brian and Perry are talking about you from stage right now in a really good light. And you're, you're the guy who connected them. And... Uh, and that's what really got me thinking, Trevor, was like, you know, man, you know, wouldn't it be cool if I had a business where that's what I got to do, where I just made connections like that for entrepreneurs that I just that I that I love, that I have respect for and that I have admiration for. And and it started that process. In fact, Bar Brian and Perry were the first two guys I talked about that, like, you know, I'd really like to have a business like this. But I don't know how to do it. I don't know anybody else who does that. And and I won't say that those two initial conversations led to any breakthroughs, but it started the process. Uh, and, and it was not until 2017, my friend Tim Templeton and I were talking. And he was the one that was like, Kev, why have you never held an in-person get together for all these amazing entrepreneurs that you know. And I'm like, you know, I don't know. I, I, I just, I, I guess I never thought of it. And he's like, well, you should give that some thought because if you did, I would want to come to that. And so over the course of the next year, in fact, the next morning, I couldn't even sleep, Trevor. I was so fired up uh, that I was, because I was, I was looking at this as like hosting a party for some really awesome guests, you know? <laughs> And, and in fact, we did it right here at my home, right on the other side of this wall. Uh, but I reached out, I started reaching out uh, to a handful of people and I, I kind of made the list of who you'd want to invite. And, and what I came to realize is the people on that list, they were all uh, very well established entrepreneurs who had a track record of getting results for their clients. And on the other side of the coin, they were the, some of the most giving, generous people that I knew that were all about contribution first. And so I started reaching out to these people. And the first six people I spoke with, I was six for six. All six of them told me, Kev, if you do this, I would totally come to it. And I'm like, you know what? We're on to something. And so that uh, August of 2017 was the very first event that I held uh, right here in my home. Fifteen entrepreneurs flew into it. And and I'll, I'll be completely candid. Uh, that first morning, Trevor, I was in a little little bit of a like, 
I mean, it was exciting, and at the same time, I'm like, holy shit, look who's sitting in my living room. <laughs> and so, yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. I, I would imagine that was one of the follow-up questions I was going to ask you is, was there any feelings of imposter syndrome or what am I going to talk to these guys about? Or do I need to lead this conversation or can I just, you know, start it and then get out of the way? Because the first time you do anything, naturally, there's this tendency to feel like I'm not ready. Right. What what was that experience like for you? Yeah, there, there was definitely a lot of that of like just not knowing what to expect, knowing what I, you know, kind of had having this vision for what I wanted, which was I wanted all of these people in attendance to just walk away having had an experience where they they made some new friendships, made some new business connections, but not on a surface level. I wanted them to be on a deep, meaningful level and uh, and just knowing that that was my intention. And uh, definitely a little bit of imposter syndrome for sure, because, uh, you know, the, that first those first two events, uh, it was all people that I knew for sure. Uh, but I know, too, that uh, a lot of them had businesses far bigger than anything that I'd ever run. In fact, I didn't remember. I remember having a conversation with uh, somebody prior to that first event uh, because I was concerned. I mean, I, we, we have a nice home and stuff. We have a nice home, but I've got seven kids. Uh, I've got grandchildren as well. And our home gets lived in. It definitely gets lived in and definitely gets you. And, and, and I was concerned about my Some toys wood. kicking around. Yeah. I mean, just stuff. And like, you know, I was like, and our hardwood floors, they got scratches in them, you know. And, and, and the guy that I was telling this to, he starts chuckling and he's like, Kevin, He's, I'm just going to let you know right now, nobody is coming there to approve or disapprove of your hardwood floors. Nobody cares, man. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> okay, that makes sense. Isn't it funny what we do in our own minds? <laughs> yeah. 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 It's and, really crazy. Uh, and so, but that event, um, you know, I just started off. And I, I just, I, 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 my goal, I, I just wanted to kind of set the stage in hoping that like this vision would come to pass. And so I just let everybody know, I said, you know what, I'm just going to let you know who's here in the room. Uh, there are some absolutely amazing entrepreneurs here in this room. And many of you, uh, you know, you've all got established businesses. You are just absolutely world class at what you do. You've got a great history of getting results for your clients, all of that. And on the other side of the coin, you are also some of the most giving and generous people I know. So that being said, the only way we can make sure that you get exactly what you need from this experience over the next couple of days is you've got to let us know. And, and you know, which means that we're not going to be focusing on best practices here. I mean, we will probably get into some of that conversation, but you've got to let us know what you, where you are, where are you right here, right now? What do you most need help and support with? And I will tell you that whatever is shared here, you're not going to get an ounce of judgment from anybody in this room. And in fact, you're going to be met with nothing but open arms from like-minded people who have years of experience and expertise. And if they are able to help you, they would want nothing more than that. And so that's kind of how we set the stage. And and uh, and I will tell you uh, that by the end of that event, I was kind of like, in fact, I even apologized. On the last day, right after lunch, I was apologizing because I was like, you know, I was like, there's been some amazing conversation here and I haven't contributed much at all. In fact, I kind of feel bad. And, and, and some, one of the attendees was like, Kev, are you kidding me, man? I mean, none of us would even be here if it weren't for you. So even that whole thing of me feeling like, man, they, this conversation, I, I didn't contribute to a lot of it because I just, I mean, a lot of them had just were playing business on a level much higher than I ever had. 
And so I couldn't contribute effectively. There was a few things that were like right in my wheelhouse for sure. But, you know, now years later, looking back on that experience, of course, that's the way it is. But at the time, you know, we just don't see that stuff. And we 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 can beat ourselves up for sure, which I've done a fair amount of in the past. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I think everybody's done a fair bit of beating up on themselves in that way. But I'm glad that you said all of that out loud, because I think. The big thing that I'd love for people to hear, and I say people because I, I've already learned this now, but I didn't know it, you know, I would say as recently as five, six years ago myself, is just being a connector of other people is an incredible business model. It really is, and a, and a way of being. And I think sometimes people maybe think that they have to have this exceptional skill or talent or unique selling proposition in a business in order to be able to create a life that they want to live. So like I think of friends that are in jobs right now where they're making good money, but maybe they don't want to stay in there, but they're kind of feeling handcuffed a little bit. And then they think, well, maybe I can figure out how to do this online stuff and work from a beach somewhere. And then they immediately default to, well, what am I going to do? Am I going to be a programmer? Am I going to learn digital marketing and become a consultant? All of these things. And what I'm hearing you say is, Actually, there's there's an incredible opportunity to just be a connector of other people, knowing that when you do that, there's an exponential opportunity there and that those people actually are seeking out like people that have maybe attained certain levels of success in their business are looking for other people to actually connect them to like minded people to have authentic conversations. And it's I think it's just incredible, really. And a lot of times people overlook that one. You know, it's they don't see that as geez, maybe I could just do that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, um, you know, the, the the other question that comes to mind here, Kevin, too, is the in-person aspect of that. You know, naturally, the last couple of years, we've been pretty virtual for everything. There's been some traveling and a few events here and there. But what's the what's been your experience with that as far as like the impact of being in person at an event versus, say, virtual? And have you had to adapt what you're doing along the way in order to accommodate that? We definitely had to uh, pivot in order to accommodate the changes that take place over the last couple of years. No doubt about it. In fact, uh, March of 2020, we had an event scheduled, a live event, in-person scheduled. That event did not happen. <laughs> and, and, uh, and we were like, wow, you know, for somebody who does events regularly, we were kind of like, okay, what do we do now, you know? And, and Jules, uh, my partner in Tribe for Leaders, uh, you know, she was like, you know, Kev, why don't we just start trying to do what we do on YouTube? You know, do what you do on YouTube and just we'll do the same kind of thing, get small groups. So we get small groups of no more than five entrepreneurs that we would kind of like really do our best to curate the right kind of group and then just give them this experience on YouTube or not YouTube, but Zoom. And, uh, and and so we curated the same kind of thing as best as we could. And we did a couple of those. And people were like, man, this was a really great experience. Are you guys going to do more of this? And we're like, you, if, yeah, we could do more of this. And so Jules and I just kind of uh, started talking about it. And that's how Tribe for Leaders was born. And so we created this community. We started hosting uh uh, conversations on Zoom with them, and we've got a, definitely got a format that we use and a and a and a you know just a way of doing things that's worked well for us. Uh, and it wasn't until probably I want to say maybe October of 2020 where we were on a Zoom call with with some of the folks, and and one of the guys, Brian, mentioned that he's like, hey, he's like, are you guys ever going to do in person stuff again? And I and I'm like, I don't know. I mean, I perked right up because Trevor, I love the in-person stuff, you know, and I was like, so I take it you're ready. I said, if we did something in person, you'd want to come. He's like, heck yeah, I would. And and so we just uh, we just talked to a few of our other members. And sure enough, there was some of them who were ready to do that. So in December 2020, we held a small in-person event again. And so we we do a combination of both the virtual and the in-person now. And, and this whole thing with COVID did cause us to like, because like we, we were not doing any in-person stuff come March of 2020. It was not happening, you know. And so we did have to find another way. We did, we did do that successfully. We navigated that successfully. But uh, 
right now, I'm really excited to be back doing in-person stuff again because I love the in-person stuff too. I mean, you know, virtual is cool, and you you know that's that's really cool. Uh, but I believe nothing beats in person where you can be in the same space face to face with people. Uh, there's nothing more powerful than that. So, yeah. No doubt. I, I'll maybe speak just really quickly to about an experience that I had too, just speaking to what you're talking about. I went to an event in San Diego back in, what was that, 2018, I want to say? Okay. And it was Scott Oldford that hosted the events. It was uh, just at a house down in uh, Pacific Beach there, and there was about eight of us in the room. And everybody was there in person and connecting, and I don't think anybody really knew each other prior to that event. So... The dynamic of it was, I think everybody was there with the same intention of like, let's figure out how to level up our businesses, right? That was kind of what everybody came in. It's like, I'm going to go learn some stuff. I'm going to take it away. I'm going to go apply it into my business. And for me, I remember sitting on the couch, Kevin, with these eight people all in a circle and everybody was introducing themselves and started with the first guy who talked about running a seven figure plus business and he was trying to figure out how to scale. And then the next person goes and said, I'm running an eight figure business and I got 40 staff and I want to figure out how to do things more efficiently and so on and so forth. And you speak about imposter syndrome. Like I've spoken about this before, but I remember it getting to me and I was thinking, what in the hell am I doing in this room right now? You know, I was thinking, <laughs> and it wasn't like I wasn't successful by definition. You know, my business is probably doing 750 K, which was significant, you know, like <laughs> considering where I had started from. But I remember my wife, before I left, she said to me, speak the truth, like just be authentic, be be vulnerable, be honest about what you're experiencing and why you're really there. And the truth was, was that I was there because, yeah, my business was doing well on, you know, the P&L, but I was stressed out. I was burning out. My relationship was struggling because of it. Uh, I was trying to figure out how to actually work less and, and, and create more. And... I said that all out loud and then everybody started sharing again and speaking the real reason that they were there. You know, the, mm. the first guy was uh, struggling the exact same way that I was. He just happened to have a business twice the size of mine. The eight figure guy was going through a divorce because he was literally burnt out and he was trying to figure out how to blow up his business so that he didn't have to have so many staff and he could still maintain what he was trying to create. So, I, to I totally get the dynamics of that in-person stuff. It's really hard to replace that because you actually get to be there and feel the energy in the room. And there's something about that compared to the virtual stuff that you just can't duplicate. You just can't. But it sounds like you've created some unique ways to be able to create prompts and questions and stuff to allow people to kind of build those relationships and maybe open up in a vulnerable, authentic way. Um where they might be a little hesitant at first, right? You walk into a room of strangers and what are you going to do? Tell them your life story and all the things that you're, um, you're struggling with right then. And of course the answer is yes, <laughs> you should, you should, but you should. I would imagine it takes, uh, yeah. And I imagine it takes a little bit of, um, skill development by you too, right? Cause you, uh, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you just intuitively had those questions and knew how to kind of prompt a room, but, is there anything that you've learned along the way that, that kind of breaks the ice and gets people to open up and start to really speak the truth as opposed to maybe the surface level kind of posturing that might happen at a, at a mastermind that doesn't create that kind of space? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there definitely is. And, you know, it's interesting. I've, I've, all, I've n never, ever had a problem doing that one-on-one -on -one with entrepreneurs. Uh, I because I just I am naturally curious about entrepreneurs, what they're working on, what's got them excited, what challenges they're dealing with. And so when I when I ask them about this, you know, uh, they and they start telling me stuff, I'm like so engaged and because I genuinely want to hear what they have to share. And then, of course, I'm asking clarifying questions on that, which, you know, I mean, we, we've all been like, you know, you, you talked about all those business cards you have and, and, you know, we've all been to networking or business events where, where people are like, you know, work in the room, you know, and, uh, and the whole working the room thing is, is people are trying to, you know, get as far and wide as possibly they can and, and collect business cards and hand out business cards. But the challenge is you get home and you have all these business cards and you're like, 
I don't know who any of these people are because I didn't connect with any of them. I didn't have a meaningful conversation with any of them. And so there's nobody here that totally stands out to me, you know. And what we want is, you know, by doing it the way that I was talking about, you know, asking questions, being genuinely interested in what they have to share, asking clarifying questions, you end up giving people a gift that's really rare. Uh, you give them the gift of feeling seen, heard, and understood. You make them feel a certain way, and they will never forget that feeling. And and that, that feeling that you give them causes them to want to learn more about you, to want to find out more about you. I mean, it just it just does. And so, you know, uh, doing that in a one-on-one -on -one thing, that's one thing. And then, like you said, in a group, you're right. A lot of times people are hesitant to share. You know, if, in like uh, in that first event that I did at my home where I set the stage, uh, there was one guy, Ryan. In fact, I'll, I don't mind talking about him because he's his name was Ryan Chapman. He owned a company with his brother called Fix Your Funnel. Uh, it was a software company. Uh, he was the first guy to share right here at my home at that event in August of 2017. Uh, he has since passed away. Ryan uh, Ryan died about a year ago from cancer. And stuff. But he was the first guy to share. And he shared so openly and so candidly. that, And he was, because he did that, he was met with all this support from everybody else who were like, man, I just re really like the way he's showing up. Kind of what you shared, Trevor, when you just spoke your truth. It caused everybody else. Well, you know what, man? I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my mask off. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna set my ego aside here, and I, I wanna, I wanna do what Trevor just did because I, that's the experience I really want. And they didn't, they didn't, they, they, they didn't realize that that was actually available to them, even though that's what we all want. We all want real connection, meaningful, not surface level stuff, but meaningful connection. But we're just kind of like, is, is this a space to do that? Is this a safe space to do that? Well, Ryan let us know that it was. And he gave everybody else permission to do the same. And they did. And the same thing with, with Tribe for Leaders, you know, we don't do any broad marketing of it or anything like that. So the only way people have ever found out about it is because they knew myself or Jules, or now they know one of our existing members who has told them about it. They've told about their experience and all that. And so even when a new person comes in, they've already heard about it from somebody that they know who has told them about the experience that like, man, you can talk, I can talk about anything and I don't get judgment from anybody. And like, so they, they've already told that story. And so even the new person who comes in, yeah, they might've had experiences other places where it wasn't that way. But even when they come in here, they come on one pod call and they experience that and they're like, yeah, I'm home here. This this is a home for me. It feels good, you know. And so they acclimate very quickly because this is what we all want. <laughs> Real connection, not surface level BS kind of stuff. Yep. Yeah, what a what a concept that is, hey, that your best mark marketing and sales strategy could actually be genuinely create meaningful relationships, go deep, help people feel understood because they are understood because you were actually listening <laughs> and finding ways to really support them and then watch the referrals come in. You know, we, this has been the thing in the sales and marketing world for years and years before all this internet and zoom stuff existed as well as, you know, you show up to the breakfast events, not to toss business cards around on tables, but to actually get to know people and to understand what their kids' names are and what do they do on the weekends and what lights them up. That's, about as basic as you can possibly get. But a lot of times we're looking for hacks, you know, we're looking for the, no, 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 no. There must be some type of a pitch that I can use. Maybe NLP is the answer. That kind of stuff <laughs> it just drives me nuts. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I was going to uh, ask you though, too. So the, this idea of <clears throat> creating deeper connections as opposed to trying to go broad, you know, and go into work the room and that type of thing. 
Have you ever heard of the concept of Dunbar circles before? I, I just found this out like about a month ago. So I always ask the question, maybe. You know what? I've heard yeah. it, but I'm, that's not to say I understand or know that much about it at all. I have heard it and that's about it. Okay. So, and I think everybody understands you it once. Know. Yeah. Once you explain it, but Dunbar circles is basically, it was um, a study done by somebody Dunbar. His name was Dunbar, <laughs> but he was speaking about this idea of, you know, there's only five relationships that you can really have a very intimate relationship with. And that would be your family usually. Right. And then from there, there's an ex concentric circles of like, and then there's 15 people in your extended family or, you know, close clients or that type of thing. And then 50 and then 150. And he speaks to the idea that the average person can't maintain more than like 200 relationships really. But yet beyond that, would be thousands and thousands, like think of my business cards, you know, I've met thousands of people in my lifetime. What do you think is the key to, to that? Because I know for me, and I'm sure many other people can think this or feel this way too. It kind of feels overwhelming. Sometimes you're like, man, oh man, like if I start really opening up to this idea of wanting to be a connector and having lots of relationships and engaging in lots of conversations and making lots of introductions, that it might take away from my time that I'm should be focusing on other things. What's been your experience with that? It's come almost like the conversation of expanding time, you know, that, cause I know this is a, a limiting belief that I held onto for a long time before I finally flipped it. And I was like, wait a second, but what, what's been your experience with that? So this is really interesting. Um, cause there's, there's a lot of books written on this whole thing of networking and making connections. And, and, and I've read a ton of them over the years, you know, and, and some of them even offer these complete systems on how to manage your contacts. Yep. And, and, and honestly, when I read about that stuff like that and think about setting up systems to manage my contacts and all that, it makes my head. <laughs> <laughs> It just seems yeah. like, oh, that's a lot of work and using this software. And, and I'm like, that is not CRMs me. That is and, not me. That, yeah. Automations yeah. and yeah. everything else. Yep. Yeah. It just seems like too much work for me when I'm just, I just like, I, I just want to connect. What I really want to do is I just want to connect with people. I want to have conversations with them. I want to get to know them. I love nothing more than talking with entrepreneurs and finding about what they're working on. And like, and if there's a way I can help, I would absolutely love to do that. And so for me, it's always been really simple. Um, so like, for example, uh, I guess, you know, like beyond my core, my, my personal, my family and those close relationships, you know, the closest relationships that I have with any group of entrepreneurs right now is through the Tribe for Leaders community. And, and you know, and we're getting ready to launch another community, too, and stuff. And so, you know, those communities that I am in regular contact with those people, and, and in this case, it's pretty much monthly that I'm in contact with each of those people for about two and a half hours a month. Uh, in a in a setting that we that I you know that I'm just a part of, so I'm in contact with those people regular. Uh, there's lots of other people I come into contact with through that I, that I've known for years or what have you that I'm not in regular contact with, and for me it's always been really simple because I'll I'll see something on Facebook, I'll see somebody post something, or I'll see somebody comment about somebody, and I'm like, oh man, I want to shoot them a message. And I, I then right then in that moment, I'll shoot them a message. But for me, it's like, you know, Facebook Messenger is a great tool. Text, you know, I have a lot. We, we all have a lot of lot, contacts in our cell phone, what have you. Text is a great tool. Um, but I don't like the written message so much. I prefer a quick audio message so that people can hear my voice inflection and all of that. And, and just so daily, I'm sending out messages, audio messages on either Facebook, or I just sent one to a guy yesterday via text message, I sent an audio message to, because I interviewed this guy on my podcast, and come to find out that he worked with my buddy Jason, he mentored with him for a year, like several years back, but hasn't spoken with him in years, but yet he was the one that he honored when we did the podcast, so I, met, I told him, I was like, I'm going to message this guy. 
because I haven't talked with him in a while, but I'm going to let him know that you and I did this interview and that you were raving about him, but I'm not going to share the interview. I'll leave that to you if you want to share it with him and stuff. And and so I got to do that. And I just let it, and, and, and you know, I'll send these audio messages and I'll do like, I don't know, typically somewhere between four to 10 a day. And it's, and it's not, and I don't have a thing where like, I need to do four to 10 a day. I just end up doing that. You just know? show up. Yeah. And, yep. and it's hard. And you know what? It takes all of about a minute, you know, maybe a little longer, but all of a minute to send a quick audio message and let somebody know you appreciate them. Let them know, hey, I saw you here and I wanted to reach out and just say, hey, it's been a while since we spoke. I'd love to catch up or I just want to do nothing more than I saw this thing that you did. And man, I just really appreciate that. And just send some love, show some appreciation, because here's the deal. No matter how successful somebody is, no matter how big their business is, no matter how great things look on the outside looking in, there is not a person on the face of this earth that gets too much appreciation. And when we just lead with appreciation and genuine appreciation, it goes so far. It gets people getting back to us. Not everybody, but it, people will reach back out. Man, Kev, great to hear from you. Can we catch up? Or I mean, it just that it's that simple. <laughs> yeah. So. It is that simple. I'm glad we're talking about this topic because I think me included over the years, we try and complicate things too much. And and the digital marketing kind of world has definitely contributed to that. I said this out loud in a conversation that I had yesterday that I feel like I was, now that I'm reflecting back on like 15 years in this space, I feel like I was programmed for lack of a better term to look for the next tool, to create the, the more complicated funnel, to integrate the CRM system that has automation built in so that I can scale, scale, scale my relationships. And then when you do that, I, I know from personal experience, you know, I built an email list of almost 40,000 people at one point, but I lost touch with them. I was in touch with them, but I lost touch with them. And then when I finally just reverted back to like, okay, no more of this. And I just literally blew it all up. And I said, I'm just going to show up every day and I'm going to focus on providing real value. And you said a key thing, I think there that I want to highlight, which is in the moment. So something comes to your mind and you think about that guy and that other guy and then, or that gal, and you know, you need to make that introduction. It sounds like you take action on it right away. I think that's a really important thing for people to hear because the to-do list will just mount up forever. And I, I can say this from personal experience. It's like really good intentions. It's on a text document. I'm going to connect that person to that person. And then it never happens. <laughs> so it's like in the moment, right? I love the audio message tip there too, because that makes it really simple because then you can just speak authentically. And I think there's an energy exchange with that as well too, right? People feel it, even though it's through a digital form. Yeah, for me, I mean, that is definitely true. In fact, I, Jules said that to me a while ago that, you know, Kevin, you should really not be sending text messages, you know, on, on text or on Facebook or whatever. She goes, you should really be sending audio messages so people hear your voice. And, and when she made that comment to me, I was like, you know what? I was like, I'm just going to start doing that and just making that shift. It, it, it's, it's, it's way faster than me trying to type a message, you know, for me personally, because I'm not a very good typer, you know? <laughs> and so, and uh, it's, it's just, it's, <laughs> we got too much time to overthink things when we're typing. For sure. For sure. And, it, you know, and, and that's the other thing, too, is we are more authentic when we're just like I, I intentionally, you know, I try to keep this thing in my mind that like, OK, I don't want to go over a minute because I know people are busy and stuff. But um, sometimes it is. Uh, but that's kind of like my guideline is I try to be around a minute or less and, and keep it in that range. And so it doesn't take much time either. And just being completely open, completely candid, completely authentic with people and stuff. And, and if I, if, if I stumble over my words or whatever, whatever, because sometimes I do that, you know? <laughs> so. Yeah. I actually created a resource like to take that even a step further. I've been using video messaging a lot, you know, using tools like Vidyard or Loom or whatever. And 
naturally it has another extra elements where you got to click on it, land on a page, play it. It's different than the audio one where you just play like in Messenger or something and you can hear it right away. So there's pros and cons. Like I think uh, a balance of the two is really good to really connect. But when I wrote when I wrote that guidebook called the Virtual Selling Playbook, I put selling right in it because everybody is kind of driven by that. It's like, how do I get more sales? How do I get more sales? And then the majority of the document, though, spoke about human psychology. It spoke about the impact of eye contact. You know what I mean? Is like, yes, your voice and your inflection and your energy and stuff. But imagine also you're looking at the camera and they feel like you're looking right at them. There's something to be said about that when it comes to relationship building as well, that you certainly can't get from a text message. And obviously you can't get it from just audio because they can't see you. But yeah, I think we're, we got a lot of good um, information being dropped here for people today, too, that no matter what kind of role you're in, we can all consciously make an effort to stay more in touch with our networks and to take action on those moments where you just think about somebody and fire off a quick voicemail. Hey, you know what? I was just thinking about you. Don't really have much else to say aside from that. Other than you popped into my head. I hope you're doing good. Like something like that can be so impactful in somebody's life because you don't know what they're going through in that moment. You don't know what's stressing them out. And it could be as extreme, like you said, as a health condition that, um, that could ultimately take a person's life, you know, or, or a mental struggle that a person's going through. Just being there, acknowledging them, um, letting them know that you're there That's if right. they ever need anything. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Some good tips here today, Kevin. Um, I want to talk briefly about the podcast as well, because I know you and I had a great conversation. You were gracious to uh, invite me to have that chat about one person that has been influential in my life, that if they didn't exist and they weren't in my life, that my life might, might not be the same. And that person to me was Lewis Howes. And you fired over the video right away. And then I took a few days to kind of think, like, what, what can I say about this that would actually help people? Not just me and, and the acknowledgement of Lewis, but that other people could see the truth behind that story. Because the truth was, is that the story was one of gratitude, but it was also one of me holding on to resentment as well. And what it actually, how it held me back before I realized the gifts that were in all of the experiences that I was going through. And, and I know Lewis jumped in on, on the post that I put out there too, and just uh, acknowledged me uh, for, for my journey and my growth. And that, you know, that meant a lot. Um, and regardless of who, it, who it's from, you know, I got lots of other comments from other people too. And it just, it feels good when you feel seen and heard and what's been your experience in doing the podcast. Cause I know you haven't been doing it for too, too long here, but you've spoken out loud to me about how impactful it's been. Hey, yeah, I'll tell you, uh, for me doing this podcast. So we started this podcast called, uh, million dollar relationships, uh, and we started it last fall. Uh, this has been hands down the most rewarding thing that I have ever done. And uh, it, we, we've, I think we've got, we just launched uh, or just released the 15th episode today, but we've got 65 of them recorded. <laughs> so, and so we've had that many conversations. And so, uh, you know, I think, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm doing them faster than I can release them because I just love having the conversations, you know. And so, and 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 all that's coming from that. Uh, so I'll tell you, you know, I'll just give you an example of some of the things that have come from it that I never would have envisioned or even thought of. So uh, I was wanting to talk with people about the most valuable relationship that they have had in their life, in their business, that's had the biggest impact on them. And what I didn't count on or didn't realize at the time when we started doing this was that for a lot of people, this is a really emotional topic. And for a lot of entrepreneurs, they've never been asked this question before. So as a result, uh, people get to see a side of them that they normally would never get to see because nobody's ever asked them this question about who's the most valuable person you've ever met, you know. And so that's been really cool. Um, uh, I did an interview with Justin Brooke, and when I did, uh, after we did that interview, and he, uh, I'm not going to say who he honored, but 
he just spent 20 minutes talking about this person that has had such a big impact on his life. And when we got done recording, he was like, man, Kevin, you, you're you absolutely brilliant when it comes to the marketing on this. And I'm like, what do you mean? And he's like, well, he's like, we just spent this last time talking about this person. He's like, I can't wait to share this interview with everybody that I know, as well as this person. He's like, I'm just stoked to do that. And 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 I'm like, Justin, I, was like, I really appreciate the comment, but I hadn't thought that deep about this at all. <laughs> and and so it, it was kind of cool to realize that, OK, a lot of people that I'm interviewing are like, they're really excited to share it. And I don't have to, like, hope that, like, people will share it. They just want to share it. Uh, another guy, Roy Morjan, uh, when I did the interview with him and actually before what we did the interview, he we hopped on Zoom and he was like, you know, Kevin, he's like, I was listening uh, to some of your interviews before we did ours because I wanted to get a feel for it. And he's like, and I got to tell you, man, for a guy like you who's a connector, what an awesome tool this is. And I'm like, what do you mean? And he's like, well, my gosh, he's like, when you're making connections for people, you know, you, you've got all these 20 minute bits of all these people. He said, you can just share it with somebody you're thinking about connecting with them and say, hey, I'd love to connect you with so-and-so and here's why. Go ahead and check out this interview I did with them because you'll really get a feel of who they are and stuff and what they're all about. And if you'd like me to make that connection, then just let me know. And I'm like, Roy, you know what? I never thought about that at all. But you're right. This could really be used that way. And uh, and he's like, yeah, he's like, you, you know, anybody that you're making connections for, he's like, you should have them do this interview with you and stuff. And and when we finished the interview, it turns out he was looking for something in specific. And I'm like, you know what? I know a guy. I'm going to send him your video and and then see if he wants to be connected with you, which he did. He watched the video and he's like, yes, I'd love to have a conversation with Roy. And so all kinds of stuff have been coming from this. Uh, you know, we, we found uh, new members for Tribe for Leaders as a result of this. A couple new members have come into Tribe for Leaders as a result of these interviews. Uh, I, I've been able to make connections for people in my life as a result of doing these interviews that would have never happened if I hadn't been doing that. Uh, and I've just been making other discoveries like I just shared along the way, too. And, and plus, anytime I can just have conversations with entrepreneurs and get to know them better, that's a win for me. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm glad you said that last piece right there because I, I wrote a quick post before we hopped on this interview here today, just reflecting on what we might talk about and, you know, why I started my podcast, the intention of it to begin with. And I, I said out loud that it was you know, I wanted to have people that were inspiring to me that could share some insights that might allow me to hack my way to my best life and not in a negative way. Let me find the shortcut all the time, but rather like, you know, impart on me some of your wisdom so that I don't have to learn the hard way, because that's been a challenge over the years for me. And I know many entrepreneurs, too, is that we always feel like we got to go school old of hard knocks, right? You got to go fall down, get up. I learned my lesson, but there is easier ways to do this stuff. And that is to just be humble and say, I don't know. Can you help me? But, you know, when you can show up for these people and just have authentic conversations, you you realize really quickly that it's actually the relationship. Yes, it's the information, it's the tips, it's the hacks, the strategies, all that kind of stuff. But it's really the relationship that it always comes back to. And that's been very rewarding for me as well. It, it was the byproduct of doing the podcast that I didn't even realize. So I'm glad that we talked about this because I think sometimes people think, well, maybe I'll start a podcast and like, oh, but what about what's it going to be about? And how am I going to monetize it? And, you know, am I going to get sponsors? Is that how like those are all the wrong questions to even ask when you start the podcast? It's like if you could do more of what you do every day that lights you up, would you do it? And if you enjoy talking to people, well, then a podcast is a no brainer for anybody that enjoys genuinely connecting with other humans. Right. And I think you're a testament, testament to that. You're experiencing it every single day. Well, you know what you what you said about, you know, and, and you're right. You know, a lot of people will start the podcast and think like, you know, from the standpoint of how am I going to monetize this? You know, and, and a lot of people will start anything 
with the thought process of how am I going to monetize this? And and quite, I'm just going to be completely candid here. That is completely backward thinking. <laughs> um, you, 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 what you want to do, I, I will tell. So for me, I got. I mean, I, I, I've learned long ago, relationship capital and relationships are the most valuable asset that we possess. And so sowing into those relationships and, and, and growing those relationships and being of service to those people in our lives. And, uh, you know, that's the most valuable thing that we can do. It will all come back. And what you've got to realize is that making an impact and being of service and being of value to others, the revenue, the money comes as a result of that. It's not the other way around. It's not like focus on the money and figure out. No, it's it focus on being of service, focus on building relationships, focusing on all that, and the revenue becomes the byproduct for that. And I will tell you that the revenue will come far bigger than you can ever imagine if you focus on relationships because when people know that you actually give a rip, that you care about people, that you, you know, and, and even if you're not in contact with people all the time, you don't have to be. They just know your intention. And like even with what you were just sharing, I, I was thinking because, you know, Mike Dillard, he used to host this podcast called Self-Made Man, and he did the same thing. He always interviewed people because it was people he wanted to learn from. And, and when you were saying that, I, I, I just defaulted to Mike and I, I wrote his name down. I was like, oh, my gosh, I got to interview Mike for my podcast. So I, you know, and so the, it, Mike wasn't even on my radar until you you mentioned that. And I'm like, I want to reach out to Mike. And I'm just excited. To, the, just the idea of interviewing Mike and having a catch up conversation with him is like that excites me. And, and I can only imagine what will come from that. But, you know, I don't know what will come from it, but it will be a great experience. <laughs> yeah, there's no doubt. Yeah, the other piece that I added onto my post today, too, was just the realization of how as you build genuine relationships with people, too, your circle of influence expands and your ability to help that person create more influence expands as well. And that becomes a limitless abundance conversation. Whereas, you know, previous to that kind of thinking, a person might think, well, there's only so much time in a day and I can only focus my attention on so many things. And therefore they just kind of push it to the side thinking I need to just focus on these handful of things. But I think hopefully people will take away from this conversation that it doesn't take much for you to actually be a connector yourself and you don't go to school for this kind of thing. I don't imagine that there's a there's a university course out there on uh, on super connecting yet, is there? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't found it. <laughs> no, but that's why it's good that communities like the one that you've created and, and all the stuff that you're doing in the podcasting is uh, is so critical to help people build that muscle. Because I think about as being a dad, you know, and I know you've got kids too. Like I, I want to embark my wisdom onto my kids and it's not going to be some tactical strategy to hack your way to success it's going to be on focusing on yourself focusing on the relationships in your life and uh it's conversations like this that i think will contribute to them believing it because you know if dad's just telling them they're not going to necessarily believe everything i have to say but if kevin says it out loud and says look at this wealth that you can create in your life, both relationships and financially beyond your wildest dreams, eh, maybe it'll land for them a little bit. So um, I got one more it question. Does. It does. Yeah, absolutely. I got one more question for you, Kevin. And then I want to ask you to tell everybody how they can connect with you and everything too. And that is, uh, you can see it on the wall there, kind of, it's a little blurry, but it's, it says be grateful. So what is the one thing that you are most grateful for right now? I'll tell you the thing that I am, you know, top of mind right now, uh, my wife, Lisa, uh, is just this amazing woman. Uh, we, we've had some, our, our older son, Jerry was in the hospital recently for an extended period of time. And, and mom, uh, took over taking care of, uh, our grandkids as well. And I'm just like, you know, that woman is, she, I, I am one blessed guy. I am one blessed guy, Trevor. And I know you are too, but, uh, my wife, Lisa, is definitely at top of my mind right now of the somebody that I am really grateful, really appreciative of. 
Amazing. Love it. So yeah, let everybody know that, uh, how they can get in touch with you. Tell them more about all these things you got going on so that they can search you out on the Google machine. Yeah. So we've got, yeah, I mean, you know, tribe for leaders.com you'll find about, uh, the community that Jules and I have been hosting for the last, you know, over two years now. Uh, I will say that through that, uh, process, uh, we, we have, um, I mean, the commu- that community is geared towards entrepreneurs running businesses. Uh, most of them are at, you know, half a million on up. I mean, we, we've got eight figure plus entrepreneurs in that community. And uh, through the experience of running that community for the last two plus years, uh, one of the things that we've realized is that uh, we're, we're, we're now starting a new community uh, exclusively for eight figure plus entrepreneurs. And uh, we're just in the process of getting the ball rolling on that. We're having conversations with those entrepreneurs right now to just find out from them what would make a community like that a big win for them. And so uh, if that's you, uh, reach out to me. I'd love to have just a conversation, just an exploratory conversation. We're just going in this direction now. Just kind of explore that with you. Uh, I can, you can find me on Facebook. Uh, Kevin the Connector on Facebook is, uh, I, you know, I'm on LinkedIn, but I'm way more active on Facebook than I am on LinkedIn. <laughs> so. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I'll make sure all that stuff's linked up. And I'm glad that you spoke through that at the end there, too, because I think that's another important lesson for people to understand. I find a lot of times, and again, I think the digital marketing space over the last 10, 15 years has told us that we need to finally craft an offer in advance and figure out all the things that you can give people that they may find of value and then build a landing page and then blah, all of these things. But imagine, imagine the concept oh, of just talking to people, head. right? Imagine just that idea of, <laughs> Hey, what do you need? What do you need? And then just giving it to them. Yeah. There's an idea. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That is like way, way easier. I'll tell you what, and doing all the other stuff makes my head hurt. Just thinking about it, you know? <laughs> Uh, it doesn't make my head hurt because I built all of those skills and I know I can do that. The part that hurts my head is actually stopping to think like that and doing something the completely opposite because I've trained myself so much to do it the other way. But I have found recently okay. just in the last like six months to take the advice that you're giving here and that we're talking about right now, which is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. simplify it. Whatever you thought it was going to be, reduce it by about 90%. There's your offer. <laughs> yeah. Just focus on the value, yeah. focus on the yeah. connecting, focus on the authenticity. So this was awesome, Kevin. Thank you so much for doing this. Uh, greatly appreciate you. And yeah, I hope that we will connect in person one of these days here too. And, uh, and, and stay connected for within sure. these circles as well, because I know we're moving our family to Costa Rica and therefore I'll have a circle of influence locally down there. But uh, but I know that there's a yeah. lot of people outside of just my immediate geography that's that I get to connect with as well. And I appreciate you and having you in my life. So thanks for doing this. Well, thank you, Trevor. My pleasure, man. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of The Trevor Turnbull Show. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please consider subscribing on my YouTube channel and on your favorite podcast platform and leave me a review. I'd love to hear from you. Now, until next time, remember, today is a beautiful day of opportunity. Trust that you're exactly where you're supposed to be right now. So be grateful, be curious, and be brave.